I am going to talk to you about the sound of love. What is love? Why are we so concerned about this word love? Every day people talk about love. I want to share with you something that I know about love. Maybe you know about it too. But love is a strange experience, a strange happening that comes to all of us at some time or the other, but then seems to elude us and go away. What is love? What kind of experience is it? Is it a kind of thought? Do we have to think ourselves into love? Or does it come by itself? Is there such a thing as divine love or love of another kind? Is there a physical love or is there a love that is not physical? What is love? Let me elaborate a little bit. Love is the potential capacity experience of human beings to identify themselves with others. When one human being gets so concerned and occupied with the personality, experience, feelings, problems, emotions of the other human being, it comes as an experience of love. Love is an identification with another. Therefore, love by its very nature has to be different from attachments. We have attachments with people that is not the same thing as love. In love, we forget ourselves in the pursuit of the companionship of the other, in the pursuit of the emotions and concerns of the other person, the beloved. There is a very interesting Persian couplet which says, Ishq avval dar dile ma shuk paida mi shavad, which means love is first born in the heart of the beloved. What does it mean? It means love is not something that we with our ego, with our thoughts can project on somebody else. Love is an experience that is extracted, drawn, withdrawn from within ourselves by one who is drawing that love from us. Love then is different from attachment. In the experience of attachment, we get a feeling we are together. However close we might be, we may be very intimate, we may have great moments of such privacy and togetherness that we have never experienced before, yet they are not experiences of oneness, they are experiences of closeness or togetherness. Love is not togetherness. Love is oneness. Attachment is togetherness. When we are attached to somebody, we are conscious of I and you. I, the one who is attached, and you, the one to whom one is attached. This I and you experience is not called love. I and you is attachment. Attachment is different from love. In love, one forgets there is an I. One forgets there is somebody who is loving. One only knows who is being loved. Therefore, the object of love occupies the whole attention, the whole consciousness, the whole awareness of a lover. The experience of a lover is not the experience of himself, but the experience of the beloved. Therefore, when you have real love, you cannot say, I love you. You hear this phrase every day. All over the world, People speak in this language. I love you. I love you so much. You will notice that when people say, I love you, the emphasis is more on I than on you. What does it mean? It is an ego trip. Because if you, seem to, if you happen to respond by saying, but I don't love you, the person who is so sincerely saying, I love you, will turn around and say, then I hate you. Which means, that this was no love. To start with, it was an attachment, not love. Love is different because in love, the ego disappears. In fact, I do not know any other experience in human life which can control and tame our ego. Most of our problems arise from ego. Most of our good motivation also comes from ego. 
But if ego is used only for good motivation and not for getting into problems, it's a wonderful experience. But since ego messes up most of our good experiences, therefore we have to tame it. There is no real way of taming the human ego except love. Love alone takes our attention away from our own ego to the personality, the attractiveness, the concern, the beauty of the beloved. The beauty of the beloved holds our attention so fully, we forget who we are. We have an interesting story from the Orient of a lover and his beloved. The lover was named Majnu and he loved a girl named Laila. This story of Laila and Majnu is very well known. Some of you may have heard of this classic story of Laila and Majnu. Majnu was so fond of Laila, he could see nothing else but Laila. He traveled in the wilderness and he traveled through the lanes of various cities and towns and he called for nothing but Laila, Laila, Laila. He forgot who he was. If somebody asked him, who are you? He would say, I am Laila. What are you looking for? I am looking for Laila. His whole attention was on the girl he loved. He forgot himself. One day, this Majnu was walking in front of the mosque, the place of worship. And as he was passing in front of the mosque, there was an ardent devotee who was saying his prayers, who was offering namaz, which is the word for prayer. And he was in that stage of namaz, which is the most intense part of worship, called sajda, which means he had saluted the Lord by putting his forehead on the ground and he had his eyes closed. At that intense moment of worship, this lover, Majnu, passed in front of this devotee. He crossed in front of the devotee, between the devotee and the altar or the shrine. The devotee raised his head up. He looked at this young man. He called him back. He said, look here, young man, do you know what you did? You committed the greatest sin anybody can commit. You came between me and my Lord. I was in that stage of worship where the feelings are most intense in worship of the Lord. You came between me and the shrine. Therefore, you interrupted the communication that I was having with my Lord. You have committed sin. Majnu turned around and he said, Sir, forgive me. I really did not see you nor did I see the shrine. In fact, I was looking for Laila. I was searching for Laila. My ha heart, my attention, my soul was looking for Laila. Had I seen you or had I seen the shrine? Believe me, sir, I would not have come between you and your Lord. I would have passed from behind you so that your worship and your love for the Lord could go on uninterrupted. Please forgive me. The devotee said, I forgive you this time. And I hope Allah will forgive you also. But remember that this is a sin you should not commit again. Majnu walked away. As he was going away, he turned back and addressing the devotee said to him, Sir, I am an ordinary human being. I am in love with an ordinary human girl. And with that love alone, I lost all sense of myself. I lost all sense of where you were, where the shrine was, where the mosque was. This human love made me so full of my beloved, I could see nothing else. And you devotee who are worshipping that Lord and pretend to have love for the Lord, how could you in the stage of sajda, when your forehead was on the ground, your eyes were closed, how could you see that somebody walked in front of you? Please do not pretend to worship. There is no worship of the Lord unless you worship with love. When you worship the Lord with love, you forget yourself. Do not have this hypocritical worship just to show to other people that you love the Lord. If you love the Lord, you will never have this kind of a feeling that you can watch others who are going in front of you. When you do that, my dear sir, you are only on an ego trip. You are not experiencing love. When you will experience real love, you will forget where you are, you will forget who you are. You will forget even love. You will only know the beloved. 
you will only know the one you love. And that is the experience which is real love. Then if this is love, where do we get it from? Do we have this experience by trying for it? Is it a thinking experience? Or is it an experience that comes by itself? The true answer to this question is, love can never come through the mind. Love can never be thought out. Love does not come through the streams of thought. Love is not a mental process. Love is not a mental experience. Love is an experience of the soul, of the spirit, of the inside of consciousness, which is not mental. Love is an experience that is not bound down by time, space, and causation. Love is not something that you can create by planning to have love. Love is not something that you can have merely by thinking about it. Love comes from nowhere. Loves come suddenly, in no time. Love comes as an experience. And when love comes as an experience, it comes in with a joy and beauty and happiness that no other experience has. Love is the natural state of our spirit. It is not confined to a few people. Every human being is full of love within himself or herself. Every human being is made up of love. The essence of every human being is the soul which is made of love. And the essence of every human being which is the soul is also made of God. Therefore we say love is God. Therefore we say God is love. Because the essence of human beings itself is the same. Namely, love or God or beauty or joy or happiness. These all take place together. Have you heard of intuition? That sudden flash of knowledge that comes from nowhere? Love comes like that intuition. Love comes from nowhere. Does not come in time. And therefore, love is not something that you can have by thinking about it. Love is of the same nature as the human spirit. Love is different from the mind. When you are in love, you do not experience thoughts. When you think about love, you are contemplating an experience that was not a thought. Love comes in a flash, and we can spend time thinking about it, contemplating about it. But the experience of love itself is not a thought. Love takes us within ourselves because love is an experience of being within ourselves. We talk of meditation. What is meditation except the experience of love? We talk of God-realization. What is God-realization except the experience of love? We talk of knowing one's own self. What is knowing one's own self except knowing the love within ourselves? When we get to know ourselves, we know God, we know love, we know the true nature of consciousness. Therefore, all these things are the same thing. They are love. And there is a strange thing in meditation that when we want to reach the inmost part of, our, of ourselves, we approach ourselves through the sound of love, through the music of love. Because nothing is more musical in this universe as love is. Have you ever sat alone with no external sounds, no external cassettes and tapes and TVs and radios playing? And have you in that silence heard the music within yourself? Do you know where it comes from? That music is love. That music that comes within us without being generated by any musical instrument is the sound of love. That's the real sound of love. That's the real music. That is love. Therefore, these mystics and masters of meditation have advised us, be quiet and listen. And you will listen within yourself a melody, the like of which you have never heard before. And that melody is love. Therefore, if you want to have experience of love and experience of yourself, listen to the melody within. It is so beautiful. There is no comparison with any music outside. Hearken to that sound. And that sound will take you to love. Because that sound indeed is love. In the meditational processes, which have been employed both in the East and the West, music has played a very important role. 
we try to create music outside so that we can be in tune with the music within. And that kind of music appeals to us most, which is in resonance, in consonance with the music within. What is the music within? Is it only confined to the head? Do we hear ringing of ears? Is that the music? No. The sound of love, which is the inner music, resound throughout the universe. It captures the creation everywhere that we have created. It is the whole universe. That music creates us, that music creates consciousness, that music creates the universe, that music creates all experiences. That is the sound of love. Meditation is the art and the method of going into the music of the self, the music of love. Any kind of meditation. I am not referring to any particular school, any particular cult or dogma or doctrine or religion or spirituality. I am talking of love. I am talking of any love. I am talking of the love that is within human beings. I am talking of love that transcends the distinction between human beings, even distinction between human being and God. That love. That love is a music that we can hear within ourselves. That music is so beautiful. Hearken to it. Sit quietly and listen within. You will see there are only two sounds in the head. The sound of our thoughts and the sound of music of our spirit. If you listen to the words of thought, you are distracted and you leave that beautiful space within yourself where the self resides, where your divinity resides, where love resides, where God resides and you go out along with the thoughts because thoughts have been born out of desires and desires have been born out of external experiences and pleasures. These pleasures and pains of the outside world take us away from ourselves every time we think. So when we sit within ourselves, close our eyes and be quiet, what do we listen? Either we can listen to the thoughts or we can listen to the soul. The soul is musical and melodious and the thoughts are clumsy, stupid words trying to take us out of ourselves. I have sometimes conducted workshops in which I have made participants look at their own thoughts. I have asked them to sit down, close their eyes and watch any images that come and listen to any words that the mind is giving as thought streams. You know, this has been one of the universal experiences. They have all got up and said, we were amazed at the stupidity of our thoughts. Why do the thoughts look stupid? Because we are not those thoughts. But when we identify ourselves with those thoughts, we say, oh, we are very wise people. We are giving some wise decisions and making some wise inferences. It is only the misidentification of the human soul with the mental process that makes us join hands with stupid thoughts and go into outside attachments and lose the feeling of love. When you have love for someone, what happens? You feel such a sudden closeness with that person. You feel you have forgotten yourself. It's a strange and beautiful uplifting experience. It is a divine experience. Any love with anyone is a divine experience. But what happens next? The thought comes in. The mind, the commentator starts speaking about that experience and says, can it be real? Are you sure? The very element of uncertainty that is built into inductive logic comes up at that time and destroys the very experience of love for which we were sitting within ourselves, for which we were given this human consciousness, for which we carried a soul with us into this human body. We had this beautiful soul in human body, this beautiful life in this human system in order to experience love. And when love comes, we destroy it by using another ancillary equipment called the human mind. These thoughts which were supposed to help us do things here, come and destroy the very beautiful experience of love that is natural to us. When we have love, we need not have any thoughts. When we have thoughts, we cannot have love. We cannot generate love by thoughts. Therefore, this divine experience comes when we are by ourselves, within, thoughtless. We don't need thoughts. We should keep our thoughts aside. When we keep the thinking process aside, 
we get the experience of the beautiful melody of love. You can hear it. It is audible. Did you know your soul is an audible phenomena, an audible entity? That love, which is the essence of the soul, can be heard and is audible? How does it sound? Have you ever heard it? If you meet people who do meditation of the deepest kind, going beyond their mind and listening to the spirit and the soul within themselves, they are struck by the beauty of that strange melody and harmony, that resonance that rings up. It has strange peals of ringing, that resonance coming like the resonance of long peals of a bell, the huge bell. Dong, dong. It is so different from the bell we hear outside, but it is a sound that attracts us. It is a sound that holds us. It has a magnetic power. It looks like something that is another personality drawing us. Do you know where it comes from? It comes from love. It comes from consciousness. That is our self. We are just turning our attention to ourselves. But then if bells represent the sound of the self, doesn't it make sense that whenever we set up a church, whenever we set up a temple, whenever we set up a mosque, whenever we set up any place of religious worship, we decided to put bells there and musical instruments there. What did they signify? They signified that we are just like the temple, that the real temple, the real church, the real place of worship is the human body. And within this body, in the dome of this body, in the top of the body, in the head attached on the top of the body, lies that beautiful consciousness, the sound of the bells. Then bells are a very good representation of the sound of love. And are they the only representation? No. Hearken further. Listen deeply and you will see that the peals of the sound of the bell can be elongated, become long enough to look like one continuous sound. If you had a bell and it made a sound like dong, dong, and then each of these dongs that peals could be elongated, dong, and you could fly in that, you would notice that that sound could hold you, carry you into a flight, into your own self. The sound changes as we rise with that sound. The sound changes as we go deeper into our own selves. And within our own selves lies the Creator. Within our own selves lies God. Within our own selves lies love. Love is not a silent experience. Love is the experience of the unspoken sound. Love is the experience of the uns unspoken harmony, resonance within ourselves. When we get filled up with that sound and we open our eyes, when we open our eyes and walk into this world, love fills us. The whole world changes. Everybody is in love with you. Why? What happened? You just fell in love with yourself. How come when you opened your eyes, you find the whole world in love with you? Because you have now listened to the sound of love. You have listened to yourself. You have been yourself. You are no longer wearing the masks of thoughts. You are no longer wearing the masks of hypocrisy, of trying to be someone else than you are. You have found out who you are. When you find out who you are, you are qualified to experience love. Every time that flash of love has come to us, it has come when we knew who we are. Love is an eternal experience. Love fills us up like nothing else can do. That sound transports us. It is audible. The sound of love is the sound of self-realization. The sound of love is the sound of compassion. The sound of love is the sound that takes us close to everybody. And when we are close to people, we discover that we are made of the same oneness. There is no experience in life which can create the feeling of oneness except the experience of love. There is no experience which can give us that feeling of being just love, just one love, just oneness, except the sound of love. Sound of love is the real meditation. Sound of love takes us to our own reality. For what is real, except that does not change? When we look around ourselves 
and look at this universe and look at our relationships and look at people around us, we find everything changes. There is nothing that is stable and the same. We find everything changes all the time. If there is something that does not change, it is our own self. If there is something that does not change, it is our own consciousness. Experience changes all the time. The experiencer remains the same. What we are conscious of changes all the time, but the consciousness does not change. Therefore, love leads us to the unchangeable. Therefore, love leads us to reality. The sound of love is the way to reality. When we can hear love, when we can hear the sound of the self, we are moving towards reality. The closer we are to reality, the more we have the experience of oneness around us. Even in the world around us, we will experience love when we are filled with love. Love comes by an overflow within our own spirit. Love comes by being ourselves. The closer we are to love, the closer we are to the experience of love and oneness with the whole world. This world is made of fragments of experience in which nothing else exists except what we created and we created it through love. Therefore, listen to the sound of love and experience the oneness with the universe.